Hey everyone, welcome to day four of Advent of Code 2023. If you're not familiar, Advent of Code is an annual challenge where every day in December up until the 25th, two programming puzzles are released to celebrate the days up until Christmas. This puzzle, uh, These puzzles are developed by software developer Eric Wastel, very grateful for the community that Eric has helped build. And it's a very fun way just to celebrate the holiday season with code. Uh, essentially every day there's two puzzles, there's a nice storyline that runs through all the puzzles and every day I'm going to make a video that explains all the puzzles as well as my approach. So today we're doing day four, you're going to see a time lapse of me solving the puzzles and then I'm going to do an explanation. So for part one, we are given a collection of scratch cards, and for every scratch card, we are tasked with figuring out its score. To compute its score, we look at a list of winning numbers and a list of our numbers, which are provided for every single scratch card, and we need to find how many of our numbers appear in the list of winning numbers. Once we have that sort of count, we compute the score by starting at one and doubling it for every single number that appears in the winning list. So if you have one number that appears in the winning list, that's one point. Two numbers is two points. Three numbers is four points four numbers is eight points and so on and so forth in general it's going to be two to the power of how many of our numbers appear in the winning numbers list minus one so it's exponential and there's an offset of one in the exponents so this is the first time i use regular expressions in advent of code 2023 but it's a pretty simple application if you don't know regular expressions, I would highly recommend checking them out. I'll include a link to some regular expression resources in the description. But essentially what we're using them for here is basically just splitting up lines based on white space characters. So you know that there's going to be a, a bunch of white space characters between these integers. Some of them might be one space and some of them might be two spaces though. And it's kind of difficult to parse that if you rely on the built-in function. So we're going to use regular expressions to basically, for every single line in the input, we're going to split it based on white space. So this is what this line is doing. We're taking re.split, which is the split method of the regular expression library, and we're splitting it by any number of, any positive number of white space characters. So backslash s in regular expressions means any white space. So it could be space, tab, uh, I don't think, I don't know if new line counts, probably not, but any white space character and repeated a positive number of times, we're going to split the line by those occurrences. And that's going to perfectly divide the line into a list of contiguous um, numbers. So card is going to be in there, one colon is going to be in there. But then we're going to get, for example, in this line, 42, 68, and so on. That's all going to be in our list. Once we have that, we need to split it into the list of winning numbers, which is on the left, and the list of um, our numbers, which is on the right. To do that, once we've done our split, we're going to take indices 2 through 12, which I just counted are the first of these numbers. I think there, there should be 10 of them. And everything else, which is index 13 onwards, is going to be part of our numbers. So we have the winning numbers and our numbers. We just need to look through all of our numbers for each of them, check if it's in the winning list. If so, then increment our score by 1. And then at the very end, the actual score of this card is going to be the score, which is the number of our numbers that appear in the winning numbers lists. Um, 2 to the power of that minus 1 is going to be its contribution to the total. So that scratch card, that's the actual score. We're adding it to the answer, and that should be everything. So these num these values are actually hard-coded. I don't know if they're generalizable, but I do generalize them in part two. But I think that should be it for part one. Once we've computed two to the power of that for every single scratch card, we add it together, and that's our answer. In part two, predictably, we are told that we have been doing the wrong thing all along. Very relatable. And what we're trying to do instead is for every single scratch card, we can compute our score as usual, which is the number of our numbers that appear in the winning numbers list. And then we get additional copies of the next that number of score cards, scratch cards. So for example, if we are on card 10 and five of our numbers appear in the winning numbers list, then we get one additional copy each of cards 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. All of those scratch cards also function as regular scratch cards. So whatever uh, additional scratch cards 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 win, um, you get basically like two of those because card 10 gave you two copies of each of those. These pile up. So obviously if you have, um, say, if you had card 9 and that gave you additional copies of 10, 11, and 12, that would add on to your existing total or rather your future total. 
but this is quite expensive to compute directly, so we're instead going to do something more involved, a little bit more complicated, but I'll explain it. Essentially what we have here is a list of 202 scratch cards, and for each of those cards, we have a list of additional scratch cards that it wins. So for example, for card 10, we know that it wins five additional scratch cards, and those are going to be the next five. So 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. We're going to keep track of that inside this list. So for each of the 202 scratch cards, we maintain a short list of all the uh, extra scratch cards that it wins, so the indices of those cards. Once we have that, and the logic for doing that is the same as part one, basically, uh, once we have the score, which is the number of cards that it wins, we can quite easily compute the next few just by looping through the next uh, score cards. And that's what this for loop is doing. By the way, as usual, as a reminder, my code will be up on the GitHub repository, which will be linked in the description. So don't worry if you don't catch all of the, uh, all of the code right now. Once we have that, we have a list of indices for every single card. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the very bottom. So we're going to start at card n minus one, and we're going to iterate all the way back to the beginning. And the reason we're doing this is because when you have the very last card, it's not going to have any, I'll say, dependency. So the very last card isn't going to score you any additional uh, scratch cards because we know that it can't because there's nothing after it. So considering the very last card is going to be always safe, we're only going to have uh, one copy of that card because we know it's not going to win any additional cards. So essentially what we're just doing here is we're computing like the total cumulative score, recursive score of each card. And the very last card is only going to generate that card itself. Um, even if we have many, multiple copies of it, we're not going to generate additional cards after it. So we're going to start there with the very last card and we're going to figure out, okay, well, it's only going to generate itself. Once we have the second to last card though, it might generate additional copies of the very last card. So for the second to last card, if we do have a copy of the very last card, we're going to add that onto the sort of cumulative recursive score of the second to last card. And in that case, it's going to jump from one to two, meaning once you get one of the second to last cards, you're actually gonna get two cards, not just the second to last card because you also win the very last card. So we're gonna keep going like that for every single card in here. Uh, we will have processes backwards, so we know exactly how many cards each of the future scratch cards will generate recursively in total. So, for example, going back to the card 10 example, once we iterate all the way back and we arrive at card 10, and we know that we've won, uh, say, each of these 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 once, we want to know how many scratch cards does winning one card 10 win. And we can just compute that by adding together all of the scores or like totals for cards 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, because we already computed entirely what those scratch cards are going to generate, because all their dependencies have been met there in the future. Once we add those up, we will have the sort of total recursive score for card 10. And essentially, we just do this all the way. Yeah, go back from 202 all the way to one and compute their scores, like expansive recursive scores for each of them. Once you have that, once you have those scores, you can essentially just add them all together because we know we have one of every single card um, to begin with. So once you add together all those scores, that should be the answer. I'm gonna remove these redundant print statements and that should just generate the answer. And that's it for day four of Advent of Code 2023. As usual, you can find my code in the description below, and if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I think today was a little bit more involved than the previous day's puzzles, so it's definitely starting to ramp up a little bit in terms of difficulty, but I'm going to try to stick through for all 25 days. I've done that pretty much uh, for the past three years, so be sure to stick around, and I'll see you tomorrow for day five. Thanks for watching.